Okay. Now, Dwasa is speaking at CD4 in a story oratory reminiscent of John F. Kennedy's Cameron days. Obama, President Obama came in for a great deal of praise. He mesmerized the audience, 1,500 over there. But some eyebrows were raised when he drew attention to a constitution and he stressed the need of freedom of religion, secured women, and poor. But could the U.S. President have gone back without indirectly referring to certain recent occurrences from leaders, which might have caused some concern to religious minorities? I think that message was deliberate. What he said at the town hall meeting about Indian secularism, and it particularly, many people say that no, it was not meant for India, it was for his audience back home. I think it was specifically referenced to Article 25 of the Constitution, refers to secularism, I think was deliberate and kept possibly for the last public engagement he, has, he was having. There is a concern abroad, there is no doubt about that. A few incidents that have happened here, whether he should have expressed, he should not have expressed, that's for him to decide. But the message is very, very clear that this is not liked. Particularly, uh, this damage, vandalization of some churches, that is drawing a lot of bad publicity abroad. There's no doubt about that. There are other incidents. He didn't specify the communities, which communities uh, more more aggrieved Christians or Muslim. But he certainly said if democracy is being praised, then this aspect of democracy also he was very, very clear. That, that and he was hinting possibly, I don't know whether he, I should interpret more. But there are other write-ups in the Western press which say that if there is democracy and secularism in India and tolerance in India, it gives more, more economic investment opportunities. There was editorial in Financial Times, I suppose, which said that uh, economic investment in India uh, will be affected unless India is able to contain intolerance, exhibition of intolerance by ac ac incidents. And same day, possibly a day or two earlier, the New York Times had a similar editorial. Both had a similar content that economic development or investment is based on India remaining democracy and remaining tolerant society. Okay, Gauravji, now the floor is all yours. You have heard all I have deleted from the last speaker. You can answer, you can respond to what you want. I think this was uh, a very important visit for an, a new government because it also gave us, all of us, uh, civil society, media, uh, those in the government, a time to reflect on what is India's strategic priorities vis-a-vis -vis the world. And it was good that often we heard words related to pragmatism and real politics. Despite the bombing between India and U.S. ties, U.S. would continue to support Pakistan in the uh, Pakistan-Afghanistan policy. We have to accept that. Despite the U.S. referring to India and the U.S. being natural allies, the question remains but natural allies on issues of interest to us or to the U.S. The ambassador, uh, former amb uh, Ambassador Sibyl, referred to how the U.S. might be trying to invite us, some might even say seduce us with oratory into an alliance against other Asian powers. And therefore, India itself has to identify what is our strategic interest going forward for the new government. There is a mythological tale in which one of the avatars of Krishna captures the three dimensions of the world with three footprints. And that is, in that, I would like to take that analogy and therefore try to create the framework for Indian foreign policy in the context of this visit. The three footprints, in my personal opinion, that we have to be careful about is number one, the carbon footprint. 
Yes, our per capita em emissions are quite low compared to China and the US. We have invested in a path of renewable energy, investing in solar and wind. But we are so dependent upon coal. And unfortunately, the technology that we are using in our thermal factories and in our uh, coal industry is old. And unless we don't address that, no matter how ambitious our renewable energy targets will be, the emissions from coal and thermal industry, if we don't shift to a new technology or to a modern technology, then we will always have a large carbon footprint, a footprint that might not be sustainable. The second, of course, the second footprint I want to talk about is the economic footprint. It is not only the US which, uh, which has uh, engaged, I mean, has had problems in developing business and trade ties. Many countries across the world have faced difficulties in bridging economic and trade ties. But even domestic companies have also faced a period of economic uncertainty due to either bureaucratic procedures, regulatory procedures, the environment, political environment, many factors. So that is an area where if India reflects within, if we sort our house in order, really simplify our bureaucratic procedures, really have a uniform political environment, it will not only help our domestic investors, it will also help international investors, whether they are American, Chinese or Japanese. The third footprint I want to talk about is the security footprint. We know that ISIS and Al-Qaeda have both referred to India. Al-Qaeda has even referred to setting up activities in my home state of Assam. So on terms of terrorism, we can no longer be restrictive to the terrorist organizations based in Pakistan. And here we need to look at global terrorist organizations because they have spread their tentacles towards India. And here is an area for more collaboration between India and America. And lastly, in terms of the military footprint and something that the Ambassador Sibyl referred to, it is very important when we talk about the Low East or Slash Act East that we look towards our old uh, maritime routes in which India was at one point so active during the spice uh, uh, using the spice trail. So that is an area where we have to boost a our, both our power capabilities regarding our defence, purchase those long range missiles and have those modern submarines that the general referred to as well as be careful to not to antagonize China because we want to benefit from China's economic rise we want to work with the ASEAN countries we don't we are with China we want to have a friendly competition it is a competition nonetheless we should recognize that but let it be a friendly competition otherwise if the elephant and the dragon start fighting with each other then what will happen to the smaller ASEAN countries so we have to be very mindful about our three footprints. And I think that this is a successful visit to reassess our priorities going forward. And I'm quite optimistic. Thanks very much. Ladies and gentlemen, a big round of applause for our distinguished panelists. <laughs>